plan for Gino is to compete. And I think that's another central theme. We've been pretty open and transparent about that theme. Yeah, that's going to continue. Uh, and that's all it is, is we're bringing in the best quality, highest quality competition we can at every position. And Gino is certainly an example of that. John, you have five quarterbacks, well, you include Matt Sims, six quarterbacks on your roster. How many of those quarterbacks do you realistically think will compete for a starting job in training camp? You obviously can't have all five. Is it well, a two-man race, a three-man race? Yeah, Manish, we're actually going to add two or three more, I think, before we get to camp. <laughs> um, no, obviously, you know, we're, we're constrained by a 90-man roster, and uh, you know, we're going to take it one step at a time. Let's get through the draft, uh, and then we're, we're, we're going to, uh, uh, you know, formulate things as we go into minicamp. Uh, so, you know, we're not going to carry six quarterbacks on a roster. We'll just make those decisions, but... Uh, you know, again, one step at a time, and, and tomorrow's a big step for us as well. John, what, what, what does this mean for Mark Sanchez? I and mean, he make it to training camp every day. Uh, what this means for Mark Sanchez is uh, competition. And Mark is, uh, is open to that. We've had discussions about that. I think he buys into the fact that that, that helps him. It helps any player on our team, and as a result, it helps our team. So what it means for Mark is... Uh, We've added competition, just as uh, when we uh, signed David. Uh, you know, we, we added competition. So there are no plans to release him? Excuse me? Uh, there are no plans to release him? Or there are plans to let him compete. John, when you just said that you've had discussions with Mark, do you mean generally speaking or before or right before you guys drafted Gino or since you drafted him? I'm sorry. What? When you said you had, you've spoken about competition with Mark, did you mean that just... Since you've arrived? Or Since I've arrived. That, I, again. Drafted Gino and that's right. I'm sorry. Um, that's that's since I've arrived. So I think that's that's probably not a, a new theme here. Right. Every football team is centered around competition, but we've made it a hallmark here since I've arrived. Uh, every time that uh, you know we come in contact with our players, especially now that they're in the building, we're in the off-season program, we're going to stress that. They're going to feel it. And certainly, uh, Mark has felt that. So there's nothing new. John, but have you have you spoken to to Mark since you guys drafted Gino? No, uh, we've been a little preoccupied. Right, right. <laughs> have you spoken to Mark today before you drafted Gino, letting him know that you guys would be drafting a quarterback? No, no, we haven't. We quite honestly, uh, again, we've been pretty busy in the draft room, uh, so we have not spoken to our players. We've got our our heads down, just uh, concentrating on the next step in the draft, and that will carry through tomorrow. John, you said you got to let Mark compete. Can you say with 100% certainty that he'll be in training camp competing? I look at it one day at a time. You know, I, you know, I think we all do. That uh, This is just about assembling. Uh, it's a daily process. It's uh, whatever measures we can take to bring quality players in, increase competition at every single position. And we're just going to let things play out. So uh, we're not going to try to forecast anything or predetermine anything. Just uh, put it out on the field and let it play out. John, what do you make of the criticisms that have been thrown at Gino, whether it's the accuracy or his ability to play in cold weather? How do you feel about those things? Well, Gino is a very highly accomplished player. You know, he's been a three-year starter. He's been highly accomplished in a you know very competitive high school environment in Miami. He's a phenomenal athlete, um, so uh, and he's you've got a you know good head on his shoulders. We spent a lot of time with Gino. You know, we spent a lot of time with um, a lot of our, our draft prospects, but him in particular, we visited him. We went out to dinner with him. We brought him to New York. We went to his pro day. We saw him at you know we we've, we've watched him play. We've been on his campus. So we did our homework on Gino, and we got a real good feel for him. John, can you try to trade up? Uh, to get him today? We won't get into what we did and didn't do. I can say that some of the, uh, the reports out there were a little premature and inaccurate. Terry, you were in Morgantown, right? For the, the so was Jeff, yes. Can both of you guys maybe uh, just talk about what impressed you about? Well, he threw the ball very well that day. Um, he had been working with, uh, with uh, Chris Wanky, uh, went through a workout where they threw 62 balls. He completed 60 of them. Uh, I thought the thing that impressed me in that workout was the fact that his footwork, which he didn't have an opportunity to do a lot of at West Virginia, uh, looked good relative to the route depths. And, uh, uh, again, he threw the ball very well. He threw it accurately. 
Uh, he was very impressive in that in that pro day. Rex, I don't. I mean, actually, I'm pretty sure you probably know he he guaranteed a playoff berth today. Just what your reaction to that is? I, I hope he's right, but. Uh, 